So one kid's name is Abram. Oh my God. What's the other one? Guess. Caden. Caden. Sim- Symphony. Oh wait, are you serious? Like, like yeah, like, like, like symphony, like, like like the orchestra or like the candy bar. I don't know the candy bar is symphony, huh? I, I hate these people. And whose team is this? Is this your team, or is this your daddy's team? Thanks for listening to Dad Mode Podcast: Common Sense Parenting in a Politically Correct World. Here's your host, Andy Carlson. Welcome back to the Dad Mode Podcast, Common Sense Parenting in a Politically Correct World. I'm your host, Andy Carlson, at Andy Carlson Show on the Twitter machine. I'm a father, and I have no idea what I'm doing, but uh, you know, neither there. Mono. So let's try and learn something together today. Website is dadmodepod.com. Twitter at dadmodepod, or just use the hashtag uh, dadmode. Uh, joining me, per usual, uh, the sidekick, Uncle Nick, at Nick Sun on Twitter. Hey. Yeah, how's it going today? Now, what did you do this weekend? Because it looked like you were trying to pretend to be white. <laughs> um, well, uh, I helped my brother move um, some stuff from his in-laws from uh, northern Minnesota back here to the Twin Cities. They were moving to, eventually moving to Florida. So I yeah, spent a good part of the day moving. And then I went out uh, to uh, an Irish bar last night and had a few beers. Now, Usual. what's the deal with the Irish cap, or what do they call that? I forgot. To, I don't know what they call the it. The reverse um, kangle. <laughs> um, a couple weeks ago, I went to uh, Irish Fest in uh, St. Paul. Um, I had a great time. Um, yeah, and um, I was with my aunt, and uh, we were like looking at stuff to buy. <laughs> a lot of uh, expensive merchandising, as usual, and but um, those cool like hats. Um, they had a bunch of those for sale, and we found. One stand that was selling them for twenty bucks, which is honestly like like half the price that most of the stands were selling them for. Wait, some stands Those were charging forty bucks for a hat. Yeah, uh, forty to sixty. What? Yeah, yeah, for those hats. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's crazy, crazy pricing. Oh. So I bought one, and um, yeah, I'm not much of a cap person. I, you know, baseball caps. You know, I wear them usually just for sporting events. Um. This one uh, is pretty comfortable, though. I like wearing it casually. So try to change my persona, change it up a bit. I'm going to become Irish Nick for a while. So wear the hat and wear a Tommy Bahama shirt <laughs> all the time, 24-7, even in winter. <laughs> I'll see what I can do. All right. Uh, so topic for a day is one that's kind of annoyed me for a, a long time, and I don't really know why. Oh, actually, I, I do know exactly why. So... You've probably read about it, whether it be in the news or seen it on like the Today Show, Good Morning America, whatnot. Uh, this whole Sam and Nia Raider. Now they are a Christian vlogger couple, and the whole term vlogger like annoys the piss out of me to begin with. But we'll, we'll get to that. Now you may know them initially from was it a month ago, a couple weeks ago, the whole dad surprises wife with pregnancy or husband surprises wife with pregnancy thing where all right so first off i I think sam is a a borderline psychopathic narcissist but we'll get to him later and the whole premise of the video was he scooped up some of his wife nia's piss and then did the pregnancy test and then surprised her with the pregnancy test and it was it, it was one of those "Quote unquote viral sensations," but a, a lot of people, their BS meter absolutely went up because it was very poorly acted and just very hammy, kind of kitschy and whatever. Then, what was it two or three days later? They had a miscarriage announcement. Now, I don't want to go into the whole science or medical stuff. And again, this is something that's it, it, it's like the perfect thing to pick if you were. Not saying they did, but if you were trying to fake a big event in your life because no one could call you on it because she was six weeks pregnant, etc. You know these things happen. Uh, doesn't show. Hard to tell. They didn't go to a doctor, etc. Now, I don't want to call them out, okay? But I'm going to kind of call them out. A lot of people think that it was fake. Nick, what are your thoughts on that? It's. Uh... 
uh, as being the non father of of our podcast, you know, I I don't know. I I really want to know. I really wish someone would come down and I want to hear a you know put a lie detector test on these guys. This is this is very suspicious to me. Um, I don't know who to trust with a storyline. I mean, is this something to just get high ratings? I mean, I think um, I was trying to do research on them. If this is like their full time job being vloggers, I mean, because there are people. Like this is a profession now. You can mm-hmm. be a full time vlogger and like have a career and make money. Obviously the way to make money off this is having more hits, more subscribers and people that watch stuff. So you have a show, I think the the premise of their vlog, I think they videotape every day. Like a short yeah. like a, 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 a like a short little segment every day. And we even I, I, we haven't even gotten gotta, to the best part, but I keep going, sorry. So, no, I was gonna say like and yeah. like you know it, I bet it gets boring pretty quickly. You have to change up a little bit. I won't be surprised. Like maybe YouTube has like a sweeps week and like the guys like hey let's do this type of thing and uh, you know and you know do a surprise and then and then oh let's do a mission carry like 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 a, like soap opera week or something. It's I don't know. It's it it's very it's obviously the it's very tragic uh, to lose a child. I'm sure. Um, uh, but I mean to have it exploited, and even though it is your job to be a vlogger, it's just to have that personal thing out in the open like that. It's just it's very suspicious. I don't know. I don't know if I trust it. Now, all right. So a lot of people have been questioning um, the validity of the pregnancy. First off, the whole scooping urine out of a toilet, which is diluted with toilet water, is not the best way to test for pregnancy. So. Some people called BS on that. Now, the whole timing of it where she hadn't gone to see a doctor. And first off, if you are truly like completely broken up over this and not doing it for attention or to really follow up on your pregnancy announcement that got over 30 million views on YouTube, um, why would you put this out? Like, why would you share this moment and yes, it'd be like, Oh, it's trying to bring followers to Christ because there are Christian bloggers, but vloggers, but it it just seems very, uh, and I watched the video. Uh, I'm not going to watch it again, mostly because I don't want to give them the clicks because I'm not going to give these people a time of day anymore at pretty much after this episode. And then I bitch about them for like 30 minutes or whatever, but the entire video while your heart goes out to them, if this was in fact very real, it seemed very staged, very crocodile tears, very well rehearsed. And it's just something where like, if you are truly heartbroken over a loss of a child, if it was legit, and if you're not complete psychopaths, you're not going to put this video out. You're going to be like, well, we're going to take like months off and please respect our privacy during this time. Why why would you want to put this out there unless you knew, Mm -hmm. hmm, This is gonna get us a couple more million YouTube hits. Come on, baby. All right, yeah, exactly. You don't. Mm. I, I mean, obviously, I obviously with something as personal as and tragic as you know as as a miscarriage. You know, I mean, well, you know, you can say something like, "This is you know what happened," but don't don't make it a long video about it. It's just you know, it, I mean, if this if this is real, as we were saying, I mean. I mean, some people maybe this is therapeutic for them to say it out, say it out in the open. But I don't know. It, it seems way too because because it, it was pretty quick, wasn't it? Um, how many? You know how many days specifically from the the, the pregnancy announcement versus? Uh, it, was, it was three days. Did, did you back away from your mic? Oh, a little bit. Sorry. Yeah, uh, yeah it was about three days, uh, I believe. Three days. Okay. And you know their whole quote unquote YouTube celebrity, which uh, again is something that uh, YouTube celebrity is a, a term I hate almost as much as Instagram model, even though Instagram model, that's, pre- that's pretty cool. But what <laughs> maybe what annoys me more is that their quote unquote viral breakout debut was uh, a video titled good looking parents sing Disney's frozen. And it's a video of them in a car with their kids and they're singing Frozen. And the whole title, Good Looking Parents are talking about this, just shows like how narcissistic a-holes they are hiding behind 
some sort of family values because their kids are in a lot of these videos too. And that's like the main crux of this that we'll, we'll get to. But the whole, the ease of technology is really develop this sort of subculture of, hey, 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 look at me. Uh, I'm famous now for doing absolutely nothing and creating dubious content that idiots are going to watch 20 million times on YouTube. And now you have people like this who possibly might have, maybe not have pulled a complete stunt, which is of a fake pregnancy and a fake miscarriage, which is completely deplorable and just terrible because you got to think of the people who actually did go through miscarriages and their uh, emotions with that. But you get people who would pull stuff like this if it's true. And we even, we're 10 minutes in. We haven't even talked about the dude had an actual Madison account. <laughs> oh, man. That, um, and, the, uh, oh, and the best thing ever is that after that news broke, uh, a day or two later, they came out with another video saying that I've forgiven him. That was in the past. We will learn from this. And yada, yada, yada. And it's... Now I I'm a Christian, okay, and but these people are like the ISIS of Christianity, and I don't mean that in a hyperbolic way, but they're like the worst because they they hide behind or don't want to say hide behind, but they use their faith as a measuring. Uh, how am I trying to phrase this? They use their faith as a way to be Teflon, where nothing can stick to them, where they can do no wrong and everything is positive and like if he had been found guilty of killing three hobos they probably would have done a video like well god has forgiven me for killing three hobos and it's just only going to make our family stronger and make us better parents and blah 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 because you know that that would have happened because it'd be like this will get five million youtube views click do they have a day and nighttime job uh apparently he was a nurse except he apparently quit to do the YouTube full-time, even though his hospital didn't know anything about it. Mm. Yeah. And what really sucks, and probably this is the most shallow part, Nia's kind of hot. <laughs> no. Uh, let's see, uh, 20, she's 26. Uh... And I, I feel so bad for the kids because this is like the main crux of it because they're like props in this like telenovela of narcissistic self promotion uh, that these two parents are like brainwashed. And, and I blame the dad because you can kind of tell that the dad was like that guy who wanted to go to Hollywood and be an actor, except he didn't. And then he became a, a nurse and then, you know, he got married and had kids and has a family, but it was like, Hmm, I still want to scratch this itch. And then all of a sudden YouTube, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh. I can become a YouTube star, and I'm going to use my family and my faith as props in this because no one can call me out on it. No one can call me out on it, and they're off to the races. You know, you have to – All right, first of all, I'm trying to become a YouTube sensation. As you know, I do have a YouTube channel or two. Um, yeah, it's not that easy, so I'm kind of upset at this whole situation right now. Now, if they're – if their values are really true, it is all about family. It is about spreading the word of Christ and teaching family Christian values, even though you started your Ashley Madison account while your wife was pregnant, NBD. Um, <laughs> then how about you uncheck the monetization box on YouTube? Hmm? Sam, hmm? how about that? If it is all about giving back and it's not about your narcissistic ass and not about making money off of it, uncheck that box. Just uncheck the box, easy peasy lemon squeezy, and then, uh, may, then maybe people will stop throwing rocks at you for being a complete fake phony a hole. To, to be fair, it, um, I'm reading here. It says that um, he actually has never met anyone through the Ashley Madison account. So oh, he good didn't for him. Uh, maybe they they're like oh ew, everyone <laughs> Ashley Madison. <laughs> you. Uh, the the funny thing is the. The whole Duggar, uh, you know, being on Ashley Madison as well, and then the wife coming out and blaming herself for driving him to that, and it, it's just like whole the whole brainwashed sort of like Duggar upbringing. And I'm not trying to cast aspersions on Christianity, but these people give 
Christians a bad name because they're also effed up, for lack of a better term. Because honestly, the the typical reaction and what should be the right reaction is if your husband is found on Ashley Madison, like if the wife found me, uh, if I had an account on Ashley Madison, a paid account with the whole uh, adult tree, no, not adult tree, the whole affair guarantee for two hundred ninety five dollars, she should be pissed and rightfully so. So she should probably leave me. But no, oh, it's my fault. It's not Josh Duggar's fault. Uh, it's also not. It's also my fault that he diddles his sisters when he was. They were kids too. Yeah, that's also my fault. That's not me. That's my bad. That's my bad. That's just wrong. It's this is. I don't know. Um, do, do you think? I mean, so this. I mean, this has been going on for a while with the Duggar family, and mm. you know, so it's because I wanted to blame. Like maybe it's TV, maybe it's the media that's doing it. But no, these people are all probably pretty messed up beforehand. So, and it's. You know that uh, the the Sam and Nia people are probably like pitching the whole thing to TLC. Hey, how about we get a reality show? Yeah, when we got a family, we we got two. We have two kids, almost three, allegedly. <laughs> almost three. You know, uh, YouTube and TV just do not mix. Um, it's kind of been proven on the Eat Channel. Um, uh, the the one YouTube sensation. Uh. Uh, that Grace, uh, I think Helberg is her name. Um, you know, she's um, her show's kind of flopping. You know, I don't just got to keep it on the internet, and I just just stay on the internet. Don't go, don't mess around with TV. More people can watch TV, and don't mess up any more people by making your show well, available. The weirdest thing is about these two these two pieces of work is that the the first reaction wasn't sympathy. It, it was um, questioning of the validity of the miscarriage and you rarely see that so this is like so much bs that people's you know bs meter went up immediately and it's funny i was watching on like the today show good morning america when they were talking about um the whole miscarriage thing three days after the pregnancy video because you know they do these little segments all the oh a little happy little fun fun and you could tell when they were reporting about the miscarriage that you know that they can't say BS because you know, that's not what you do on the today show or good morning America, but it's the whole, Oh, I feel so sorry for them. Tragic. Yes. Terrible, terrible. But you could tell in the eyes and the body language that they were like, ah, it's a fresh batch of bullshit right there. I, I wonder if we could, I would love to know how many takes they, they do for their videos. I doubt they do oh. everything. And- one clean shot. I mean, that's how you can kind of tell, you know, the you know validity of the of how well these YouTube things are shot. And for the record, for all, all our viewers, we never stopped and we we record anything. We do everything. We in one don't straight shot. stop. <laughs> nice. Because we can't answer. Oh, that is a really good point. I would love to know how many takes they did of the miscarriage video. Like, would be like. Because I'm sure uh, if, oh, we got to start over. Direct- I missed my line. Yeah, because if he's directing it, he's probably like they'll probably watch it. And obviously, if you're in editing, like, um, listen, honey, uh, can you uh, can you whimper a little bit more at this line and stuff? And oh, wait, let, let's make sure the lighting's just right. You know, it's kind of, I mean, uh, I don't know. It's as a, you know, it, as it comes down to you know, if this all really ha- happened, you know, I mean, this miscarriage and everything, mm. you know, it is tragic to. To lose to lose something now, you know. I was obviously not being a parent. I can't truly express my feelings for it. But you know, to have something like that is a tragic statement, and my heart goes out to anyone who's who's had to go through that. But this is kind of the I don't know what the word is. They're it's, they're, they're monetizing people's sympathy. There you go. Yeah, yeah. I like that one. Yeah, it's and it's it. That's not right. And I, I mean, honestly, you know, God forbid, like if something happened to one of their kids or like say one of their kids, you know, knock on wood, pass away in a car accident, you can guarantee that these assholes will be uh, have a, a video tribute up in like two days. Oh, no. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. You know, when I first heard the story, um, because I think I got because um, me and my YouTube following, um, I saw the. The miscarriage video first mm-hmm. before seeing the actual pregnancy one. So um, I was truly devastated. One mainly because this is the first time I heard of th- this group. Yeah. Um, but um, the thing was, I didn't know they had two kids already. So I thought mm-hmm. this was like 
a genuine a, a genuine couple trying to just you know like who love each other who are just trying to start a family and like my you know my well it pulled my heartstrings when i first mm-hmm. heard about it and just now knowing like oh they're a family you know they're a full family youtube like tv show it's, yeah, a- a- absolutely does and plus you know it, this is the perfect thing to pick like if this truly is fake which is a non-zero chance that it, the miscarriage was completely out of whole cloth but this is the perfect thing to pick if you're like a psychopath psychopathic machiavellian because a no one can prove uh, whether it happened or did not happen since you did not see a doctor and, and b it's one of those spots where if someone does call you out, the person calling, doing the calling out does feel kind of weird about it since they can't prove it one way or the other and it will never really be proven. Uh, and it's it's like a, the thing where you meet someone new and then you make a mom joke to them and then they'd be like, my mom is dead. And now you can't prove it offhand, but you want to be like, you want to do the rebluff and be like, I know she's not, your mom's not dead. And then they come over with the re re raise and they're like, no, she really is dead. She passed away two years ago. And then you feel bad. And then the other guy's like, nah, just kidding. <laughs> it's exactly like that. And to bring it back on the kids, I feel bad for the kids because they are like props. They're like extras in this little like morass of self-absorption uh, that I'm pretty sure it's the dad that's per- perpetrating the whole thing. He's the engine that's driving this train. I, Nia... Nia did nothing wrong, baby. How you doing? <laughs> God. But the uh, other like YouTube sensation videos that get all the hits uh, that really piss me off is the parents that recording their kids crying after a sporting event, or like say their favorite player gets traded, and then they're sitting in the car and like Steve Smith got traded, or Steve Smith's not going to be a Panther anymore, and then they they got their camera out and focus around the kid, and the kid's just bawling his eyes out because he or she doesn't understand. That why Steve Smith ain't going to be in Carolina anymore. But the parents like, oh, instead of consoling my child, make, letting them know that everything's going to be all right and Steve Smith's going to be happy playing for the Ravens, uh, no, I'm just going to – my ass is going to get some YouTube views and I'm going to feel a little bit better about myself. And uh, screw the fact that this is going to live on the Internet forever. So when she's 15, 16, you know, she's going to get teased by some mean girls in her high school and be like, oh, oh, are you so sad that Steve Smith isn't a Panther? Oh, little Becca. Oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. ho. Parents don't think about this stuff. They're living in the moment because their narcissistic ass wants to get some YouTube clicks. All right. All right. All right I have two things. First of all, with that example of Steve Smith being traded out of Carolina, I mean, that is probably really tragic for Carolina. Uh, no. You still get they, – they need wide receivers after Benjamin got hurt. But anyways. <laughs> all right. Uh, but um, you know this all started back – I think this all goes back to David after, after Dentist. Mm-hmm. The whole when – the, when the father did the whole – Oh, yeah. The kid ha- – Cause that was an old video, um, and I think that was one of the most famous ones. That like I, you know, I think back when YouTube was starting, I think that was one of the most famous ones. Where Is like, that's real life. He, yeah, he was all drugged up and stuff. I mean, mm. yeah, I, I'm surprised more child uh, service. I, I haven't researched this at all, but I, I'm surprised more. I wonder if any child service people. I wonder if they look into this stuff. Is this considered child endangerment or some type of like exploiting kid type of thing? I mean. All these YouTube things? It is kind of exploitation. Uh, but I, I feel like there is, uh, especially in our society today, but I feel like deep down in our DNA, there is a, a strain inside all of us that wants to be famous, recognized, uh, a celebrity, as it were. Now, back in the 50s, you had to go all the way out to Hollywood, uh, be homeless for a little while, and hopefully get in the movies, and etc. But now with YouTube, all you just need is a, a cell phone and internet. And that's all you need. And you're like, and get famous right here. And, and to realize, like, a lot of this griping comes off as, could come off as hypocritical because I'm the guy with, like, 17 different podcasts. But I see it as I'm actually creating content that does something as opposed to putting out a video of, uh, oh, my, my little kid crying so I can capitalize on that. Because people love kids. People love crying kids. And then they just get all the clicks. If you have a crying puppy in there, that will get you about 30 million views. I must be one of those people who just don't care about kids or crying um i will admit i do like watching videos where people like get hurt <laughs> yeah <laughs> kind of like america's Funniest home video style you know like like oh yeah i'm on this bike i'm gonna go off this ramp oh i'm going way too fast oh i hit a tree that was obviously right fucking there you know 
So. Well, it's like the segment. Uh, so your aunts are probably on Facebook, right? And it's always like the aunts uh, who share the the video, like, "Oh, this is the cutest," or "Oh, I feel so bad for her." You know, the video of the kid crying because over Steve Smith, and then you know she shares it with her friends who think like her, and then they share with their friends who think like them. And it's like the whole suburban soccer mom, president of the homeowners association type of mentality, and then it spreads like wildfire, even though it's complete garbage, adds nothing, adds no value whatsoever. But, hey, you got 5 million clicks, baby. Oh, I forgot to turn on the monetization. Shoot. Damn it. What are the kids' names? I don't know. Eden, Jaden, Caden? I was, trying like... to I was trying to bring that back for you. That's actually a good point. Oh, I kind of want to look. Now, uh, I'm boycotting watching er any of their videos ever again, but I, I will read like when people talk in S about them because it it's like the whole, you know, ye without sin, cast of her stone, you know, don't judge lest ye be judged, that whole thing. Uh, but no, if you're stupid and act like a douchebag, you deserve to be called out on it because otherwise we're just going to have people – murdering, making snuff films, putting it on YouTube, and be like, oh, well, we can't judge. That's their path. We have sin. Uh, to backtrack a little bit, um, what are your thoughts on Jimmy Kimmel when he – doesn't he do uh, – every Halloween, doesn't he do the thing where he asks parents to um, oh, videotape yeah. their kids about uh, like, oh, there's no more Halloween – was it Halloween candy or like it's Easter Halloween candy? candy? Yeah. The Halloween candy. What do you think about that? I've never seen a single video. I don't find oh, that entertaining first off, at all. I, I love Jimmy Kimmel, and I, I do think that some of it is funny, but the parents who send in the videos are the worst. <laughs> <laughs> they really are. Hmm. Yeah, I got so it. So here yeah. we are. Yeah. <laughs> but um, so oh, now I, I do want to look up these kids. All right, talk. You know, um, with all this that's uh, – with with talking about the subject right now, I feel like we're still fueling this fire because obviously we're talking about it. And if people listen to our podcast about this, um, mm. you know, they're curious. They're going to have to look up the videos. And I think we're, we're going to fuel that fire more. Where people are going to give them more hits and they're going to be like, hey, more people are watching our videos. Let's keep putting out more stupid videos and explaining our kids. You know, I feel like – the only way to truly end all this is to just not watch it. But obviously we're talking about it, so we have to watch it. And well, I, I think this it. is like the, the crest before the fall, though, because you know people, they will get generate more interest than the whole you – know, any publicity is good publicity. I don't really subscribe to that. But basically they have a divided group now. Like half the people think that they're complete phonies and, and full of shit. So – that's not good publicity because they'll get a little bit of buzz now, maybe a little bit of bump, but then these people will completely ignore them for the rest of time because, you know, there's way too many other things and priorities in life. I'm trying to think. Um, all right, so one kid's name is Abram. Oh, my God. What's the other one? Guess. Caden. Caden. Sym Symphony. Oh wait, are you serious? Like, like yeah, like, like, like symphony, like, like like the orchestra or like the candy bar. I don't know the candy bar symphony, huh? I, I hate these people. Uh, the the name just did it. Before it was just mild disdain, but now I, I literally hate these people. <laughs> so they named their kid Symphony, and then she, the kid Symphony, is unwittingly unwit being a YouTube star in uh, a complete hermetically sealed, completely fake, over the top YouTube show. Okay. Um, okay. are, they, are, they, are they schooled at all, or are they homeschooled? I don't know. They're in the school of hard knocks right now. Ooh. Picture of uh, Nia in her wedding dress. Now, okay, so, all right, no, okay. You're, so, first off. <laughs> you're, in, you're in trouble. First off, Sam, why are you trying to step out on Nia? I mean, you're, I mean, you're, you're like a five, Sam, and your personality is like a negative five, and you're kind of an asshole. But so Nia is like the best you can possibly get. All right. So why are you even trying to step out uh, on Ashley Madison, even though you have been cleansed of your sin? Baloney. Get out of here. Get the hell out of here. I hate these people. Damn it. Okay. God damn it. Now I'm, I'm, I'm looking up Nia now too online. God damn it. Damn it, Andy. <laughs> That's kind of cute. Yeah. Well, there you go. Uh, that was the, Quasi extended version of 
but it wasn't it was quasi parenting related i tried to we tried to bring it back home but it's more just a, a way to say that i despise sam nia's okay the kids are innocents in all this but mostly sam we need to find a way to get sam in prison i don't know how but we'll find a way well i don't know maybe you can i mean we could find it on him if he's doing ashley mass and stuff i mean i bet you know he could be, you know, maybe the child molester or something. I don't know, he like, get, like Jared. He should get five to ten for that haircut. <laughs> All right. Yeah, uh, but voice. we're out of here before we slander anymore. Uh, tell a friend about the show. You know, you're, you're sitting around the water cooler and be like, hmm, you know, the kids are kind of monsters. But what really gets me through it is the dad mode podcast because Nick is okay. Andy's phenomenal and all the other good stuff. And they hate Sam and Nia. So it's a, I, well, we hate Sam. Nia's okay, again, to hammer that point home. Also, support the show on Amazon. Click through a banner, top left corner of, of dadmodepod.com. Uh, bookmark our link and just buy all of your stuff you normally do. We'll get a little taste and keep the lights on in this mother. What's the next thing you're buying on Amazon, Nick? Um, I just got an email from Amazon. Um, I've been searching for um, waiting to see when Ted 2 comes out. Um, yeah. I can pre-order right now, so I think I'm going hey. to uh, pre-order. Uh, pre-orders work, right, for, your, for this uh, Absolutely. Amazon Absolutely. Why, no, why do you want to F Scott Fitzgerald? What did he ever do to you? <laughs> he did so much to me. All right, Bad fine. Uh, but we're gone for this episode. Show's available on, on iTunes. Give us a rate, a review, and a subscribe. Definitely hit that subscribe button. Uh, follow us on Twitter at DadModePod, me at Andy Carlson Show, or Nick at Nickasun. Website is DadModePod.com. But be a man, be a father, go DadMod. We'll see you next time. Call me, Nia. Think the episode you just heard is worth a dollar? Well... Send it our way. Visit dadmodepod.com slash support to find out how. Be a man. Be a father. Go dad mode. The music is created and produced by Deeb. To hear more of his tracks, visit soundcloud.com slash Deeb.